Okay. Tomorrow night is the big one in ROH. It'll be Ring of Honor's Supercard of Honor 8. This is the most hype I've seen for an ROH card in a long time. Only one problem. It's not on iPay-Per-View. You gotta go live to see it. Which means I'm gonna be stuck waiting another five weeks just for them to do a, a pay-per-view, an iPay-Per-View again when they team up with New Japan for Global Wars Wars and War of the Worlds in May. And that sucks ass! Anyway, we're going to be looking live from the St. John A. Alario Senior Event Center at the Bayou Senior Sports Complex in West Wego, Louisiana, in suburban New Orleans. Doors open at 6, bells rings at 8. Matches set up are as follows. First up, no DQ, Mark Briscoe against Michael Bennett. Okay, Briscoe and Bennett have been going at it for a little bit. But who to take this one? Hmm. Well, Bennett was successful last year in Shelton Benjamin in an impromptu match at Supercard of Honor. And we thought he had pretty much put B.J. Whitmer out of commission. But with that said, I'm going to say Mark, the crazy chicken, Mark Briscoe, takes out the former prodigy. Besides, as far as I'm concerned, somebody needs to get a spank into that cum barf and gutter, as Cheeseburger calls her, that cum barf and gutter slut. Next up. Three-way tag team match. Winner gets the world tag titles, gets a shot at the new ROH World Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks, at War of the Worlds on May 17th. Participants in this match are Red Dragon, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, Rowan Hansen, and the forever and former IWGP and Junior Heavyweight and ROH World Tag Team Champs, the forever hooligans Alex Kozlov and Rocky Romero. Hmm. Now, we know the Dragon and the Hooligans have some pretty decent chemistry. I mean, they each have split a match. And the new guys, Hanson and Rowe, as decent of a tag team as they are, this powerhouse duo is probably going to be the odd team out. So, if I were to go out on a limb here, I'll say the Hooligans come out on top and win the ROH World Tag Team titles. Next up, a number one contendership match for the uh, determine who face goes to War of the Worlds for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship of New Japan Pro Wrestling. It'll be Mr. Wrestling, Kevin Skeen, against Unbreakable Michael Elgin. Winner goes to the Manhattan Center to challenge for the IWGP title. These two guys have had some pretty good matches over the past couple of years. Glory by Honor 11, The Unbreakable Hope. Open Toronto. Steam came out on top of the tile on the line at 31 minutes. Last year, Death Before Dishonor 11, the semifinals of the tournament. It's a crown new champ. Good match, but not as good as in your first matchup. So, I'll say in this one, for the rubber's sake, Elgin's been wanting to become a champ. He'll get his shot May 14th, I mean May 17th. When he takes on Kazu Kazuhika Okada, who has been the champ for close to a year. who has been the IWGP World Heavyweight Champ for nearly a year now. 
course, record for longest reign with that belt, still to this day is held by Shinya Hashimoto during his third reign, which lasted from April to April of 1996 to August of 1997 when he finally lost it to Kensuke Sasaki. I guess the Kurt Angle victory doesn't count. No. And Okada also has the seventh longest ROH World Heavyweight Championship reign. I mean, IWGP in total reign. Now let's move on. My pick. Michael Elgin to win, win that title opportunity. Next up, two out of three falls to determine the Ring of Honor World Television Champ, your current champ, the Sicilian psychopath Tommaso Ciampa against Jay Lethal. Now, let's remember the last, recall the last time these two fought each other in a two out of three falls match. It was Boiling Point in August of 2012 in Providence, Rhode Island. Ciampa tore his ACL in that match against Lethal. The match went all three falls, yet it was Lethal who came out on top in that match. Question is, does lightning strike twice for Jay Lethal? Or does the Sicilian Psycho find a way to come out on top? But keep in mind, he hasn't won several, past, at least each of his past three defenses have not ended with him winning cleanly. as. They've either been lethal or Matt Taven have been distracted by the little bastard known as Truth Martini. But I'll get into that in a little bit. My pick, well, lethal's not going to get away this time. Lethal's not going to be sure, not going to get the title back now. Now, or at any given point. Well, I do think he has a small chance of doing it, but a very small one. After all, if you also want to take into account that two years ago at the WrestleMania weekend show, Champa pretty much screwed Lethal out of the TV title. Well, that said, I'll say the victory goes to the Sicilian psychopath. Next up, a grudge match. Matt Taven against Truth Martini's mystery wrestler. Ever since Taven dropped the TV title, lost the TV title to Champa at Final Battle, and that, and pretty much broke free from the House of Truth and Martini's influence, the harbinger of havoc and hoopla has been making it his life's mission to make Taven's life a living hell, screwing him out of match victories, including a world title opportunity. In victory at raising the bar on night one in Milwaukee back on March 7th. And you have to admit, the build-up is getting a little interesting. But the question is, who's he going to fight? Who's Martini pick? I've heard some rumors that state it's going to be someone like Rhino or Jimmy Jacobs or even Matt Hardy. But I'm not buying it. There's no way he's going to get Cheeseburger to do it. 
And there's no chance in hell Truth is going to get Cheeseburger to do his dirty work, especially with Brutal Bob watching the little fellow's back. Or it could be that big Samoan prospect, or the romantic touch, a.k.a. Rhett Titus. I mean, come on, we all know it's Rhett under that mask. In a way, Taven gets his revenge, and then gets his hands on Martini and rips his fucking head off. I'm hoping. Next up, streak on the line. Last real man, Silas Young, against Artie Evans. What kind of real man brings a fucking leather strap to the ring and flogs people when he doesn't get his way? That's not a real man. That's a real pussy, if you ask me. Or even a real asshole. And what's the deal with this streak? Is there any reason to turn Artie Evans a fa into a face? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's getting him over with the crowd, but personally, I liked it better when he was a sniveling, heelish lawyer character. Or, or because it was funnier, just because it was easier to make fun of him and get under his skin by calling him a Power Ranger with his wrestling attire. That said, I'm going to take Robert Evans, Robert D. Evans to win this match and keep the so-called streak intact. Next up, one-on-one. -on -one. Decades, Roderick Strong against Cedric Alexander. Now, I know I'm doing this not in, an order of signif in no order of significance with the match. It's the same for the main event match. But I'm just doing this for the sake, just to get my opinion on each. The story behind this match, 12th anniversary show, Cedric released his new, unleashed his new move, finisher, the lumber check, which is basically a backbreaker, something Roderick Strong is most known for. Now, personally, I was told, now, if you know me, I was totally against splitting up the CNC Wrestle Factory, because I wanted them to get, get the gold on their waist. And instead, Ring of Honor screws them over in Columbus last November and forces the team to disband after losing to Red Dragon. Would have it been wrong? What would have been so wrong allowing, with allowing two black guys from North Kakalaki to come away with the gold? I mean, I count at least... Four opportunities, Ring of Honor fucked up in that case. He was putting the belts on them. Final Battle 2012, granted it was a triple threat match, also involving the Briscoes and the team of Carino and Jenkins representing Scum at the time. Uh, oh, yeah. Best in the world, again, a six-man, I mean, a six, th triple threat, right, sudden death match. The TV taping thing the following day and Pursuit Night 2. Not going to hold it against them, but with the decade, not against them for much longer. Now, the decade thing, this was something that came out of left field at Final Battle, in my opinion. Okay, I get it. Roderick, BJ, and Jimmy have been in the company 10 plus years, but for over 10 years. But if I remember correctly, Jimmy, but memory serves, while Jimmy Jacobs has been in other promotions like Juggalo Championship Wrestling, these were all lower rank or tier independent circuits Jimmy has been in. And when he was not part, when he was not contractually obligated with Ring of Honor. Roderick and BJ, on the other hand, had gone to WWE and to TNA or WWE, respectively. In Roddy's case, it was both. 2004 to 06, he had a couple of impact, early Impact episodes on in TNA, was part of Eliminate, and was featured in, on the card from Gen, from Down for Glory, 2000, from Unbreakable. Well, to I believe against all odds, 
me, oh, unbreakable of 05 to against all odds of 06, if I remember correctly. And in between that time, he was even given a shot to win Kurt Angle's gold medal on a SmackDown episode. Oh, and he tapped out to the ankle lock in that stupid, you know, Kurt Angle three-minute invitational. Beat Kurt Angle within three minutes or last the whole three minutes, you win his gold medal. BJ, on the other hand, when his drug issues were getting the better of him in 04 through 06, he went to the WWE in 06, shortly after WrestleMania 22 for a couple of months before getting released. And the way they sent him off was him first losing Mr. Kenny slash Anderson under his Gunner Scott character persona. I'm referring to BJ. Then have him get pummeled by the great Colleen and tucked into a body and then put away in a body bag. I am not kidding on that. So basically, if you ask me, Jim, while it does make sense in that regard that Jacobs is more or less the leader of the decade, just like he was with Lacey's Angels, The Age of the Fall, not so much with Scum, But come on. If any guy deserves to be in the decade alongside Jimmy, it should be Jay Briscoe. Now, I'm just saying that to put it lightly. It should be Jay Briscoe and Prince Nana. Two men who have been in there since day one. They've been in the company since day one. I mean, sure, the Briscoes did have a couple of tryout matches on TNA's early TNA's weekly pay-per-view episodes. Oh, it's back in their, in their starting days. But I digress. My pick, Roderick Strong to win. Finally, main event. It's Ladder War 5. Defending for the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship. Defending champ Adam Cole going up against Jay Briscoe. This has only happened four other times in ROH. And with each, and after each ladder war, they've often said, never again. Last ladder war we had, 16 months ago. Kevin Steen defending against El Generico with the title on the line. Right. It ended with the champion coming out on top. And statistically, when a title is on the line in this match, every time the champion has come out the winner. On the other hand, Jay has been in two previous ladder match, ladder war matches, and he's one and one. The other one he was in was ladder war. He was in the first ladder war at the Man Up pay per view. He in 2007, where he and Mark beat Steen and Generico to retain the tag titles. He was in the third ladder war. He and Mark were in the and he and Mark were in the third ladder war against the Illini Express to get with a contract for a future title shot on the line. They lost that one when the red ties and Kenny King. Adam Cole has never been in ladder war. Sure, he's probably gotten some guidance from the quote-unquote self-indulgent iconic monster and demon Matt, devil Matt Hardy, but as far as I'm concerned, Cole's inexperience is going to get in the way. Look for Hardy or Bennett to try and screw Jay out of the title. And it wouldn't surprise me if they did try to get involved. However, last year I said Jay Briscoe had no chance of defeating Kevin Steen. He proved me wrong. And for the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight title, he proved me wrong. Tonight and tomorrow night, history is going to repeat itself. He did it to me once, he'll do it again. My pick to win Ladder War 5 is that tough, hot-headed, ass-whipping redneck from Sandy Fork, Sandy Fork, Delaware, Jay Briscoe, to once again become the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion. A title oh, he never lost. A fit, he never lost. He was stripped of it.
So that's all I've got to say for this. I'll probably watch the show when it comes on demand on Saturday. God bless. Peace.